Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I appreciate, I want to do a shout out to the City of Chandler Industrial Development Authority for continuing to sponsor these programs. And today I have with me Mark Stewart with Concept to Completion and Katie Shanahan with Concept to Completion. Welcome and you're the newest employee. I am. Yes. Loving every minute of it. Happy to be here. Well, we're so great. And I want everybody to hear a little bit more about you. But today's topic is about email. It still works. So, um, but before we get into that, I'd like to um, give you a little bit of background about our two fabulous guest speakers today. Um, Mark Stewart with Concept to Completion. Mark has over 25 years of experience as a Fortune 50 leader through founding his own businesses. Mark has also launched multiple brands from scratch and has either founded or co-founded three different startups in electronics, sporting goods, and the general computer um, consumer product goods industry. Mark has intimate understanding of marketing in the modern age, having experience in with retailers such as Target, Walgreens, Walmart, Canadian Tire, and Amazon. Mark can provide insight into common marketing and retail strategy. Mark has recently been appointed as the vice mayor of the city of Chandler, as well as represents the Job Creators Network as the Arizona State Ambassador. So, Mark Stewart, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Terry. And in addition, we have Katie. Katie Shanahan is a recent graduate from the University of South Carolina in May of 2020. Katie graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration with a focus in marketing and management and an and English minor. During her time at the University of South Carolina, she was a full-time student athlete where she re represented the university at the Southeastern Conference in NAAC, NCAA Division I level. Some of her accomplishments include SEC Academy, honor roll for five years, what a great accomplishment, as well as the community service team and a two-time team captain. Katie joins the concept completion as the new marketing coordinator after working five months um, at the Phoenix Children's Hospital Foundation where she assisted with social media. And she is a true social media junkie. And the concept to completion team is really excited to have her on board. So welcome, Katie. Thank you. Thank All right, you. I do have to ask, what sport was it? I was a swimmer. So I, I swam for the University of South Carolina for five years, loved every minute of it. Uh, well, good. Congrats, congrats. Look mm -hmm. out, Mark. I know. So I got, I, there's, so, there's so much intelligence around me. Uh, when we're on our meetings, it's absolutely blows me away how sharp our team is getting. And uh, they've actually raised the bar. It wasn't hard to raise it, but they definitely have been raising the bar since since they joined the team. And I couldn't be more excited to have Katie. So thank you for having us on today. This is great. Well, and I can't wait. So the big question of the hour is email marketing. Does it really work or not? No, does it ever. Does I'm going to turn ever. it over to you and let you take the program away. Well, thanks, Terry. I appreciate that. I'm going to do a little share screen here real quick. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, can anybody, uh, can you confirm that you can see that, Katie? I see it. Awesome, good to go. awesome. So email marketing, yes, it still works. Not only does it work, it works extremely well. And it should be your first um, tool that you are looking to in order to reach customers. And what everybody's talking about today is convert. So Katie and I are going to kind of ham and egg this, a little salt and pepper, uh, a little shake and bake. We're going to kind of go back and forth through this list. And I want to thank Katie for helping me put these slides together. You did a great job. And so the areas of discussion today are going to be pretty simple. Uh, we we'd obviously need to talk about what the current state of marketing is during the COVID area, like what's, what's happened uh, and where we're heading. We want to talk about what small businesses like us and like you are doing to maximize their reach in this digital space. How does email work and how it can work for you? The impact of a perfectly timed email the types of emails to send, and we'll go, always go back to the C to C mantra, which is give, 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 give. And when you think you're gonna ask, give some more. Uh, general times to send an email, the ease of access to those links and the impact of adding videos and images. So you're gonna see me kind of looking off to my second screen over here throughout the, uh, 
throughout the presentation, but, but stay with me and stay with this screen. And then we're gonna close it off with a, you know, the, the type of email tool that you wanna use, whether that's MailChimp, Constant Contact, or a CRM like HubSpot or Zoho or something like that. Doesn't matter what you use, just make sure you start using it or uh, get better at using it. So, hey, I think it's, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what we've just sort of been through, um, what in two days, uh, well, excuse me, tomorrow will be the one year anniversary of the emergency order in Chandler for the COVID crisis. And what we saw during the pandemic was a huge shift, uh, tectonic shift in the way people were using digital media and spending their marketing dollars. Um, matter of fact, the Federal Trade Commission uh, had to crack, crack down on a several groups that were using deceptive, deceptive marketing strategies during the crisis. And, uh, and, those, and many brands had to make big decisions about uh, what they wanted to do when the pandemic hit. And what we saw was smart business, forward-thinking businesses use this opportunity to get where people are living, which is I'm looking for my phone right now, but fortunately I put it away, but they're figuring out ways to get in here so that every day when you're on your phone, they're advertising and they have a way to get to you. Um, and so email is one of those ways, and we're going to talk a lot more about that. But keeping in mind that there was a refocus of spend away from traditional media into digital media, and that will continue to, to continue, continue to continue. continue. Um, so the pandemic uh, led to an increase of 45% of people spending more time on social media. We all know that as well as streaming services like Netflix blew up as so does their stock price. Uh, massive increases in online gaming and fast food delivery and grocery. People were living in their phones and, uh, and we need to be there as well. Here's the thing about that. That's creating a habit and that habit's gonna stick around. People aren't gonna go back to the way it was. They're gonna continue to use DoorDash. They're gonna continue to use Netflix and they will continue to use uh, tools like, um, uh, that, like their phone and their laptops and their computers and their, and their tablets to uh, get information and to stay entertained. So. I think it's important that we talk a little bit about some of the key terms that we're going to talk about. Katie, um, can you share with us a, a couple of these items that, that we want to be clear about? Yeah, absolutely. So just a couple of things to keep in mind as we move forward in the presentation. Click-through rate is the percentage of subscribers, people that are on your email chain who click on a link, image, or video within the email. Also, call to action is a piece of content intended to induce a viewer, reader, or listener to perform a specific act, um, typically taking the form of instructive or directive. So typically, act now or um, free gift with purchase. Those are specific call to actions that we'll talk about later on. Yeah, th those are super important for uh, for email is to make sure that when somebody is going to open your email, you got to have a great headline but you also need to have a reason why they want to continue their, their journey with you. And sometimes it's just an introduction email and we'll get into the types of emails later. Um, but, you know, I think the biggest thing to take away from this, and we don't need to get into the percentages uh, and those things, but email converts. Email marketing has the highest close rate of any type of digital marketing. So much so, and I know I'm one of those people that I look forward to getting email from some of my favorite restaurants. I look forward to getting emails from, uh, some of my uh, places where I, uh, you know, like um, uh, the PJ Superstore or Hornacex Golf, right? Um, I like seeing what specials they have coming up. And so I look forward to getting those emails. Your clients will look forward to getting those too. So keep that in mind because those convert a lot higher than anything else. The ones to your right, social media, paid search, online display, those are awareness ads. Email is a conversion ad. You're literally asking somebody to take action. So you want to be involved in that. So, so Katie, tell them, tell them what a dollar spent uh, is worth. Absolutely. So like Mark just talked about, um, you got to be return on investment. That's a big thing in marketing. And we completely all understand and get that. So for every dollar you spend on email marketing, you can expect an average return of $44. Just think wow. about the possibilities that that could open. So a perfectly yeah. timed email can move your business to the top mind of any consumer that receives that email. And Mark will kind of dive into that a little bit on too. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm going to kind of be the color co commentator here. Katie's going to kind of go through the different types of emails. So this is where you kind of get your pen and paper 
me kind of jab, this is your ideation sort of part of the, uh, of the presentation. We're gonna give you some ideas of types of emails that you can send out. And, and Katie's gonna kind of walk through uh, uh, quite a few of these. We've got eight of them that we wanna share with you. And what I think you're gonna be able to do is as she's talking about this, you're gonna think of things as it relates to your business that you can push forward through your email campaign that is gonna make people connect with you and be looking forward to your emails coming out the next time. Go ahead, Katie. Absolutely. So the first two types we're going to talk about are loyalty and rewards. So they can be expressed in so many ways, especially if you utilize automation, which we'll talk about later on. So MailChimp, HubSpot, you name it, we'll talk about it later. Um, there's also an emotional connection that consumers need in order to feel retention, um, to maintain retention. They want to feel that you value them as a brand. Um, so a couple of examples of uh, loyalty and rewards are milestones, uh, points expiring soon if you offer points, and then collecting feedback, which we'll talk about later on too. So next one, guides and blogs and other content. This is the perfect way to highlight your content, especially if one of your strategies is inbound marketing. So whenever you publish a new blog, send an email with a brief overview, um, stating what the blog's about and then include a strong call to action. There we go, talking about call to actions um, to draw them to the site to read the blog. Um, these are huge ways to get engagements. I just had a call. I just had a call to action to answer the front door because of the dogs. So <laughs> keep going. The joys, the joys of the, the uh, COVID, uh, whatever, from home. COVID winter, but go ahead, Katie, sorry. Okay, so some more uh, testimonials and reviews. Social proof is a great way um, to close deals along with driving up your sales. Um, it's a great way to showcasing testimonies and reviews tie into a customer's story. So you can use this to nurture an existing engaging consumers along with using testimonies to inspire new um, consumers to convert. Like Mark talks about, conversion's huge. Um, surveys and feedback, asking your customers about your company's performance can be awkward and scary. We get it, we know. Um, but asking for feedback allows you to gain insight into your performance so you can adjust and change things as needed. Surveys allow you to gain insight into who your customers are. Think of it as market research. Market research is huge. Um, it's just another way that you can figure out what works best and then you can adjust your email based on the type of feedback you get. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And, you know, I don't, I, getting surveys back from clients and customers is, is sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow, but boy, if you really are genuinely interested in getting better as an organization and you're willing to take some constructive feedback, or maybe it's, you're going to take some really good compliments. You could go either way, but um, you, sometimes, you know, the answers sometimes if you're going to do these surveys, but if you really want to find out how to be better at a better business, um, you should really reach out to those. I don't know how you guys snuck into my kitchen and got a picture of my phone. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to figure that out, but we'll go to the next slide. Keep going. Okay. So keep keeping it rolling. Welcome emails or welcome series. Um, welcome emails tend to have the highest open and engagement rates in many days, many, many now today, nowadays, um, many customers expect to see a welcome email. Um, so some questions to think about are, um, are the welcome emails based on how they sign up? Um, and are they a good mix of content? So 82% of welcome emails get opened, whereas the average open email rate is 21%. So that's definitely something to think about too, and make sure you have a welcome email once you get someone to convert. Um, promotional emails. The task in today's age is an offer, a mix between promotion and engaging emails like Mark talks about, give, 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 that's our mantra. So some engaging emails can be how-to, informational content, or those guides and, the guides and blogs that we talked about earlier. So 49% of consumers state that they like to receive promotional emails from their favorite brands on a weekly basis, give or take. Yeah, that's crazy to think that 82% of welcome emails, I didn't know that until uh, we went through the dry run before this call or you know, before this, uh, this webinar. And so um, just think about that, how that makes your consumer feel or somebody that's connected with you, left you their email and you welcome them uh, as part of your family or part of their, your client base or whatever that may be. That's huge. And uh, that goes a long way for building brand awareness. So always keep that in mind. It's another good reason. So a little bit more about email content to send out. Yeah, so uh, the last two uh, behavioral based emails, you can send these out basically 
with almost any action, as long as you can track what your consumers are doing on your website. So a big way to capitalize on that is to have them log into their site before your site before they use it so you can track them. You're, you have a massive repository of information here. Um, so use this information to re-engage customers that have opened but haven't clicked through or haven't opened in a while or are constantly clicking through but not purchase, purchasing. Like we're talking about, this is just another way to get them to convert. And then newsletters and product announcements. Standard newsletters are so important nowadays, especially if your focus is content marketing. Newsletters serve as a great way to get your company top of mind, like we're going back a perfectly timed email can put your company at top of mind and serves as a reminder for your brand. Yeah. And, and, you know, we are, we used a recent vlog that we put together for one of our clients who's an attorney and uh, we're going to put that into email and it's just a little reminder about who they are. We've got another uh, fitness instructor that we did a vlog with and she's going to put that into email and just kind of remind um, her one, her, her clients and former clients and maybe future prospects that she's there, but also she's going to give away some of her intellectual property in that vlog. And that's, it goes back to the, the title here, give, 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 trust me, it comes back to you. It's just like what we do, right? These, these webinars, they, I'm just, we're just giving, like, we just want to share with you how to be a better business and tools that you can use for marketing. And somebody's going to recommend us to their friends so that we can help them. And, and it just keeps the circle going. So just remember to do that and, and continue to, uh, to be top of mind in your, in your prospects um, um, email box. So the most important part of email marketing, and you know, I'm going to take this one on because I really need you guys to understand how important building a legitimate, solid, big, long email list is. Anyway, by hook or by crook, you got to get emails. You got to figure out a way when somebody walks into your, your brick and mortar, fill out a form and get an email. If they come to your website, fill out a form and I'm going to give you a, you know, a free cake or whatever. You've got to figure out how to get emails because remember what we talked about at the beginning, for every dollar you spend in email marketing, $44 comes back to you, but you can only do that if you have a good email list and you can go out and buy email lists. Normally 80% of those emails that are on those lists are junk, uh, but you can certainly do your own cultivation. Those are real. Go into, if you're old like me, you can go into your old AOL that you've had since it was dial up and uh, you can download all those emails. Those are all your friends and family. And yeah, they may not want to do business with you, um, but they may know somebody that will down the road. So uh, make sure that you're using a form on your site. I hate pop-ups. So does Google, but get somewhere on your site that gives people a reason to sign up, offer a lead magnet uh, that, that gives something to them in return uh, for, 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 for joining. So for example, we send this out and ask people to register. Um, Terry gets emails for, um, uh, the chamber gets emails from people that might be new and then they can put that into their email list and eventually say, hey, do you wanna join, join the chamber? Or maybe they call it, maybe they send something out on behalf of C2C, but I guess you get the point, get your email list built. And then Katie's gonna talk a little bit about the best times to send an email. Yeah, so there's been a ton of research poured into this. So Tuesdays and Thursdays have been proven to be the best days to send emails. If you're looking for a third day, Wednesday is a better option. Um, and e emails sent at 8 a.m., 1 p.m., and 5 p.m. have trended to perform the best. So avoid sending emails on the weekends unless they're absolutely time sensitive and you need to do that. Um, but for the most part, stick to Tuesdays, Thursdays, and then Wednesdays if you need that third option. So like the graphic says, the best day for the highest email open rate is Thursday with an 18.6% open rate. Best days for highest click-through rate is Tuesdays with a 2.73%. And then the best days for lowest unsubscribe rate are Mondays and Sundays. But like we said, weekends are kind of a gray area, so avoid those at all costs. I would pour more into Monday. Yeah, yeah, and, and and one of the things that's going to help that click through rate go up is a really cat, you know, a really um, engaging headline, right? Something that's going to grab people's attention is key, um, and it can be gimmicky. Trust me, those work for email because at the end of the day, you know how we all are. How many emails do you delete a day from all your different? I've got like five or six different emails, and I bet I delete a minimum of two hundred fifty emails a day. But every now and again, I see that one headline. It's like, hey wait a second, I want to find out about that. And those are the emails that I open. So be creative on those email headlines and, and, and understand that the click-through rate through all these industries 
is 2.69%. That doesn't mean much, but if you're sending it out to 25,000 people, that's pretty solid, right? That's a lot of people opening your email. And if the headline's engaging, you could double that. If the content is that you're putting out regularly is good, that could be higher than that. Remember that stat from welcome email? When you welcome somebody with their name in the headline and say, hey, we wanna just welcome you and say hi, those are open at 60, or, sorry, 80%. So just keep that in mind. The average is 2.69. I can't tell you the last time we sent out an email blast that I didn't have a four, five, maybe 10% open rate because, but that's because I know how to do this. So um, ease of access, you know, things, you know, going back to what's in the email itself, you've got to make sure that you add links to your email, links to your website, especially links to your social media. There's a big thing out there right now, and you, I'm sure everyone's heard of it. It's called social proof. So people are now looking at people's Facebook and their Instagrams and their Pinterest and their LinkedIn's to find out if they're a credible business before they do business with them. So it all depends on what kind of industry you're in, but it's super important. If you're a restaurant, you don't have pictures of food on your Instagram, you need them, but you need to have those links inside your email. Remember this, 81% of emails are open on mobile devices only, right? So if you ever open one of those emails where you got to zoom in to look at the type, you know what I'm, you know the emails that I'm talking about. If you're doing that, stop what you're doing. Don't even send the email out. Start over, get a good email tool like MailChimp, Constant Contact that are mobile friendly and start resending your emails through those. Because if you're sending them a different way with an old tool and they're coming in non-mobile friendly, you, you might as well, you're wasting time and money. Um, and I think, I think the big thing here is to remember that to remind yourself if, or to check to see that all the links are working. Um, if you're sending out emails and one of the links doesn't work, that's a, that's a, uh, I guess a black eye on, you know, um, your, uh, your whole business, right. From a brand perspective, that's saying you're, you're not, you don't have attention to detail or things like that. So make sure you send yourself a test email and then check all the links. Katie, anything to add on that? Yeah. The biggest thing, check those links because that's the, that's the fastest way to get an unsubscribe if those links don't work too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good call. And what about images and video? That's that's hot right now, yeah? Yeah, so video is huge. Video has been king for years and will continue to be king, but it's really important to use image and videos as a call to action. We talked about call to action in the beginning. We're talking about it again. Um, images and buttons grab your subscribers' attentions faster than links will. So any image can be turned into a clickable link, but make it obvious if you choose this route because a lot of people may not know that that image you provided is a link. So just say something like, check out this image to, to go to this place. Like just make it very obvious. And then also be mindful of image and video sizes when sending out emails. Large files and wide images can distort emails and take too long to load. And that's again, another fast way to get an unsubscribe. Yeah, you got to make sure those images are mobile optimized. And it doesn't, I don't want to make it sound like it's daunting. It's not daunting. You just have to do the work. Once you get your templates set up, you can start changing content. Once you have your email list set up, you can, you can, you can massage those as well. But at the end of the day, you got to get in there and start doing it. So again, MailChimp, Constant Contact or CRMs, doesn't matter what you use. You just need to make sure you're using one. And I think, you know, Katie brought this up, you, you know, we got to make sure that that your email doesn't get stale, you know, we, and, and the way to make sure that we do that is consistently change up your messaging. Don't just keep sending the same email over and over. Experiment with those emails. Find out what resonates best with your audience. You're going to learn over time, month to month. You think it's like, oh my God, it's daunting, but it's really not. You'll look at open rates. You'll learn, you'll learn what headlines people are starting to open. You can start to adjust those. And before you know it, you'll start adjusting your content to what your audience wants to see and you'll start maximizing your impact. And here's the key to email marketing. It's just, I don't know how to explain this. I'm going to use a, a, an analogy and I'm kind of coming up with it on the fly. It's kind <laughs> of like when somebody, it's kind of like when somebody's walking by your store and you were to like go out the front thing and go, hey, check out my store, right? Or, hey, I just want to let you know that I'm, that, that this is what we do in my store here, right? As they're walking by the front of your store. That's a great opportunity. You can't do that to everybody, but with email you can do that to everybody that's in your email list and they'll be on the tip of your, your business will be on the tip of their tongue when they're talking to friends and family and keep that in mind. So the five key takeaways, 
Katie, you want to run through those real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Email is the best ROI for effort and spend. So remember, $44 return for every dollar you spend on email. Huge profit margins. Uh, build that email list by any means necessary. Get those people on your email list. Mark was talking about it earlier. Um, send emails at the right days at the right time. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, just drill it into your head. Tuesdays and Thursdays, eight one and five those are the best times and then like mark talks about our motto give 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 content in order to get those conversions i love it i love it so that is that is the deal so hey real quick while we're in the chat here and i should have said this at the beginning but we like to exchange our linkedins we like for you to follow us that's all we ask is that you follow our pages we're at concept of completion az on facebook we're on concept of completion az on LinkedIn, we're on uh, Concept of Completion AZ on, on Instagram, and obviously we're on Twitter. So I put out a lot of content on Twitter uh, if you want to follow us there. So questions, comments, we are, we are ready. All right. I love it. Well, we do have some questions for you. So you talked a lot about, um, obviously, this is about email marketing and that. And then how often do you think is the best to make sure that those email lists are cleaned up? That's a great question. So, you know, you want to check your email. Well, here's the deal. If you've got an old email list, like you said, like you used the tip that I gave you, going to your old email account, your old AOL account, there are tools out there that'll actually scrape those emails and they'll check those for you. Um, it usually costs about uh, literally like 0 0.001 cents per email for you to get those checked up. But it's important that you do that so that you're not getting a bunch of bounced emails and things like that. So you can go out there and get those checked. But cleaning up your email list is huge. It, it, and it's worth every penny that you spend um, on using those services to make sure that they're still real emails. Okay. I can, I can maybe look up uh, what a couple of those are and maybe um, um, I, I know off the top of my head because we use one, but it just... That's okay. You think yeah. about it in that. Um, so as far as you talked about the different types, you know, there's MailChimp, there's Constant Contact and so forth. Um, what about some of these other like CRMs? Um, is there one, should you go for a CRM that is for your particular industry? Um, because, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you guys, you guys use one, right? We do. But again, um, and, and some of that is then this is the other thing as you're doing this. There are some organizations, depending on their levels of security, such as financial planners, banks, um, banks, those types of things that sending something constant contact or MailChimp or whatever, they view that as spam and you can't get through. Suggestions yeah. on that. Well, the big suggestion on that is to make sure you send it from your email. I send my stuff from mstuart at twocompletion.com. Sometimes Jillian will send it from hers. Katie doesn't know this yet, but one time we'll send it from hers. Um, if it comes from a name versus a, uh, uh, like a like my catch-all email or my info email is, is concept at twocompletion.com, sometimes that gets hung up. So using a name is, is one way you can do that. Um, but yeah, you do get hung up sometimes on, uh, on using some of these tools. It's just, uh, it's just the nature of the business. The bigger the company that you're emailing to, if you have work emails, the more likely you're going to get flagged. Okay. So I don't so, really have a, I don't have an answer for that other than you just, it's okay. Just don't, don't let that prevent you from, from sending out emails. Okay. So also on how, um, when you're trying to reach somebody, when you're setting the, these emails and these automated emails out, um, you had talked about like that welcome letter. Are there, is there one that really sticks out in your head that was really, um, that really caught your eye that was unique? Like as far as a welcome letter, I, anything with my name in, in the header, right? This is, hey, well, we just wanted to, we wanted to take a minute to welcome you, uh, you know, to, our business. Um, those are the things that stand out for me because I think that that they um, they've taken the time, at least in my eyes, um, and they treated me like I was important, even though they may have had fifty people come in that day. Those those mean something to me. Absolutely, I think as long as it 
they make it, you make it personal. I think that's the biggest thing. People want to feel that they're valued. And so a name um, I've had, like I've ordered something off of the website and then they, I've never bought from them before. And they say, Hey, Katie, thank you so much for ordering. And like have listed what I ordered. And then we're super excited to have you like in our email chain, like here's 10% off your next purchase. So I think just making it as personal as you can um, will be a huge value. Okay, Pavly, great stuff. Pavly.com and Zero Bounce. Now, I have not used Pavly. I have used Zero Bounce. Pavly is a little less expensive, but I popped it in the chat. Great. That's perfect. I think I did. I may have just sent it to you on accident, Terry. Anyway, you oh, can add it. You, you sent it to everyone. You're good. Yep. Right. Well, we'll make sure that they get that as well. So any final comments? Because, you know, everybody, I do respond to emails quicker. Um, and yes, I do. But those that have my particular name in them, brings it, it brings it up to the top. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, it just grabs your attention. And there are automated tools that'll put your name in the headers and things like that. But uh, taking the time to put a personalized header in, uh, it, you know, that works. And I think um, just making sure that you're giving content away. And you know, I use the analogy um, in our pre-run about, you know, a chef that gives away his, you know, gives away a tip for, you know, what temperature to cook a, a steak at. And it, and it could actually be a vlog. Could you imagine if one of our local restaurant tours, one of their chefs actually told us how to cook a steak at home on our grill through a vlog, through email. What do you think the open rate on something like that would be? I know for me, it would be 100% because I would want to see what an expert thinks about that. Every one of us is an expert in the, in the business that we're in. Share your intellectual property. The rising tide raises all boats. Don't haul down to that stuff. Let people see it. They're going to trust you. They're going to connect with you and they're going to convert and your business is going to grow. That's my final thought. Well, and it's funny that you brought up that analogy about a restaurant because you know what? It always tastes better when somebody else cooks it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's my philosophy on that. Yeah. So, well, I just want to thank both of you for joining us and um, tune in next week. Um, and we will have Dr. Khan with American Medical Associates about prioritizing your well being in preventative health care nowadays, making sure we're taking care of ourselves. So, thank you again to Mark and Katie for um, joining us today. Always have great information, great contact, um, and we'll see you next week. And thank you to the City of Chandler Industrial Development Authority for continuing to support the, our programming. Terry, love everything you guys are doing at the chamber. Thanks for all you're doing. And Katie, didn't you have a real quick shout out? Oh, yeah. Hey, mom and dad, cousin Pat and Melissa, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> See y'all later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.